because I know Nate usually does. Yeah. So the meeting is now being recorded. Call to order. So, Yo, do you have anything to start? I, I had a few conversations with Nate um, about tonight's meeting. He called, he called, we had, we spoke this afternoon. Okay. Do you want to go ahead or should I go? Um, I'll leave it to, to you. Yeah. Um, you'll pipe in if I have any details yeah. wrong. Okay. Yeah. So um, typically by this time, Nate has guidelines from, oh, here he comes. From, here he comes. We were just starting, so you can jump in um, from DHCD about the um, process. And to date, he hasn't received any information. So I'm going to let Nate take it away. Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone. Sorry, I'm on two Zoom meetings at once. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> life, life can't get much better than having two Zoom meetings at the same time. So, the, um, yeah, not, you know, for people in the audience, so, you know, DHCD had said, that they would have guidance documents out in January. And I thought they'd have them out by now, but they haven't issued anything regarding the 2021 process. So, you know, I spoke with Gail today, this afternoon. I think the best thing to do is just to wait a few weeks to have this meeting. So, I, you know, I wouldn't want the committee to go through the discussion of prioritizing recommendations and proposals when DHCD might change something. They haven't indicated one way or the other. They you know, I asked my program rep last week and they still said to use last year's guidance documents. And so we follow the process pretty exactly. It's just, you know, they have, because they haven't issued anything, I just, I would, out of caution, I wouldn't want to do something and then have, you know, the state come back and say, well, actually you could fund more social services because of COVID. I mean, they might make that change, right? And they might have some ch small change that we haven't taken into account. So just to be cautious, I, I would, you know, for everyone listening to say we could wait a few weeks until the state has issued their guidance documents and then we could meet again. Um, you know, there was a round table discussion with communities this week and some communities haven't even started their process yet. They're assuming that DHCD is gonna push the whole thing back by a few months. Um, they haven't said that yet. So I think we'll just, I, I you know, I'd, I'd like to wait um, and see what they do. It's, it's somewhat disappointing because we still don't have our 2020 grant award either. So, you know, usually we get that in the fall and we haven't even received an announcement yet. It's now mid January. So they're quite behind. So uh, typically we, you know, have this timeline that's based on um, the final date at which you need to get everything into the state, correct? Right. And I don't remember what that date has typically been in the past. So usually it's uh, like the third week in February. It's ranged anywhere from like Valentine's Day to the end of February. I think last year it may have been um, yeah, like the 21st or, you know, somewhere around there. So, you know, on the this roundtable discussion earlier this week, you know, communities were saying that even if DHCD said that they would follow a similar timeline, how can they? They haven't even made a grant announcement yet, right? They're like, so how do communities even prepare an application if they haven't provided that, you know, that timeline. So I think some communities are anticipating that the deadline for the application to the state may be pushed back, you know, two or three months. Uh, you know, DHCD has said twice in emails that they would try to have it be due around the same time as last year. So, you know, I hedged my bets and went, we, you know, we have a, I think we have a really good process. So even if we have to wait a few weeks, I feel like we've done the public input, we've had our request for proposals. And so we can, you know, if we ever need to change something, I feel like we could make a pretty small change to if we have to, you know, change our review criteria or something, or if they, if the state comes back and says, here are the priorities, you know, we've already done the, solicited the request for proposal. So I don't, you know, if they really lengthen the deadline, we could reconsider, do we open up the proposal process again, or are we satisfied with what we've done? You know, I think that would be a town, the town and the committee would could discuss how that could work out. And that may depend on the timing too. If, if you hear something next week, right. then maybe the timing doesn't change that much, but if it does take a couple months, then who knows, right? Right, yeah, I mean, uh, they did send an email out. Like I said, my program rep sent an email out. I emailed her last week and she seemed to 
see, she indicated that something should be coming by the end of the month. Um, so, you know, my thought is we get, uh, you know, they post something in a week or two, and then we have this meeting in three weeks. You know, I was thinking maybe the first week in February is something we could um, anticipate. And then, you know, hopefully by then we'll, we can just go through the process. So we don't even need to hold the January 28th date at this point, or we should continue to hold that? No, I wouldn't hold it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I apologize. They had said originally that they would have information out in January. And so I was, I was optimistic they'd have it out by this meeting. So then, you know, we could, we could understand what they're looking for. Anybody well, have I any blame you, Nate. <laughs> Just, just cause. Somebody needs to be blamed. I, you know. <laughs> I just wanted you to the all the proposals and get your uh, your rankings in, and then fill the beans. I don't want you to get too lazy on me. <laughs> it's like getting your homework done, and then there's no quiz. Right. Yeah. It's like a snow day. <laughs> well, ben, ben, set a ben, meeting ben. now in early February, or wait. Um. We can, you know, what, what, you know, what we'll do is I, I think we could, I mean, we could, I'll pull up a calendar. If we think, I mean, we could just say, um, you know, for instance, like the, there's February 2nd to Tuesday. I mean, we could say that first week in February, the second week, and we could just schedule something and then it'd be, you know, I could email everyone and let them know we could wait two weeks before sending a notification out. So, you know, I'd post it online, I'd email all the applicants. Um, so we could try to set a date now. Maybe I don't know what what works for people. What you know, we said the second week in February. That's the eighth through the twelfth. If there's, you know, a certain day that works better, or any day that week works for me. The week before is not so great for me, but that week is fine. Sure, we could try the eighth the week of the eighth. I just can't do the eleventh. All right, that's a Thursday. Is the ninth good for people? The Tuesday. Ninth works for me. Fine. <clears throat> They're both fine for me. So this is just sort of, we're just penciling this date in. It's tentative just given the fact that we don't know when you're going to hear, right? Right, right. Yeah, this th this way, if they do um, issue some documents in the next two weeks, and it seems like we're okay to move forward, you know, we could just, I could confirm that date over email and then post it online and let everyone know. And I talked to Nate today, he's going to get back to the applicants just to let them know that there's been a, that our work is delayed because the guidelines haven't been put out yet, put set forth. So we did our work. It's just, um, we're reliant on the guidelines. When we do have the meeting, um, will you share the rank, the compilation of the rank orders with us in advance, or do we just see it at the meeting? It usually, if uh, you know, I would share it a little bit in advance, and I, we'd at least have it at the meeting. So, I mean, I can share the screen, and you could see see the order. Yep. Great. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, we did, like I said, I think you know, we had inquiries from a number of organizations that end up not submitting proposals for say social, social services or capital projects. So there was opportunity for you know more proposals to be submitted. We, you know, we did go through that process. So even if it's delayed by a few weeks, I feel comfortable with the process we've had. I think, you know, the question would be if DHCD really delays this application, what, I mean, you know, some communities I think thought, think that maybe it's going to be pushed back until like May, which would be extremely late. It's never been due that late before. So, you know, I'm anticipating maybe they'd push it back a few weeks and then I think we'd be fine. If they really say, you know, they push it back by months, you know, I think that's a discussion we could have with the committee, you know, what's, what's the, you know, what's the process to move forward then if they really delay it that much, but. And do you, in your experience, is that something that you would likely know by our next meeting, for example, or it has nothing like this ever happened before, so there's no experience to draw on? Yeah, this is unprecedented that it's been this, I think it's a combination of COVID, they've been really busy working with that, and then I think the HUD audit uh, has really slowed them down, so, you know, they can't make any actions or take any actions until HUD approved their five-year plan. And typically that would have happened like in July or August, maybe September. Uh, so for it not to be approved until now is really late. So I think, I think HUD took, is really scrutinizing states and um, 
you know, divisions that get block grant money. So, you know, because of that too, it makes me wonder, the state has said that they're not gonna make big changes, but what if HUD recommends changes to the program? And so then they have to Im implement them, uh, you know, in the, in the 21 uh, grant round. So although they've said not to worry, it's just, I, you know, I realized this week that I just, I, you know, I, I, would, I would feel bad for the committee and for the applicants if we went through the whole process and then, you know, two weeks from now, the issue guidance documents that contradict what we've done or say we need to do something differently. But it, this has never happened before. I mean, this is really late. You know, in the last 10 years, it's always been due, unfortunately, right around now. So, so everyone has to submit proposals around the holidays and then work really hard at this time of year. Okay, so great. We'll, we'll look to hear from you that you'll confirm the February meeting. Mm -hmm. And did we, did we say the 9th, right? February 9th? Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. yep. I just wanna say, I said to Nate today that, um, you know, I think I'm the, um, old, one of the old timers in the group that the responses to the questions from the agencies were, I thought were really, really comprehensive. Um, there was a lot of detail and well done and that that's kind of new for us is to send out these questions um, before we meet to make decisions and I was impressed with the way that the responses came in I don't know any anybody else felt the same way but it was I thought there was a lot of good work on the side of the agencies I also thought it made the process a little more fair because <clears throat> um, there were some things that they could address rather you know, straightforwardly that you know, we might have seen in the um, application. And so giving them a second chance to come back, I think levels the playing field a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the hard work begin will begin because mm -hmm. we can fund five agencies, so five, five you know, projects. So we'll see. But maybe DHCD will change their mind and make our work easier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, no promises, but it, yeah, it'd be nice if they did. No, no thought, Nate, that um, a change in administration, new HUD secretary and appointees coming in is going to make any difference or that's not a part of it? Um, you know, this money is for next federal fiscal year. So, you know, they would probably say it's not a part of it, but maybe, right? Maybe they're anticipating, you know, is there, you know, they were assuming probably level funding, you know, and program, you know, and programmatically it wouldn't change. So maybe, you know, maybe they are considering, well, what if, what if budgets are, are cut a little bit or, you know, bec maybe because of COVID, what if there still need to be redirected to certain priorities? And so, you know, the state hasn't said anything about that, but it could be part of the consideration now. Okay. You know, knowing that, um, you know, I think the effects from this pandemic will still be felt, you know, so I think, you know, I, I could see where they might change priorities for next year and really push certain things, but it's without having, you know, any guidance right now, I'm not really sure what they would do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry nice about that. I was, really hoping, I was really hoping they'd have something out by now. So I, you know, for the committee and those in attendance, I, you know, you know, you can have a short meeting tonight. <laughs> you can have a quick evening. That means you can get back to your other meeting. Yes. Yeah. It's on my. I have another. <laughs> yeah. I have another screen. Good news I have another for you. Screen and it's, it's it's still going on. <laughs> and Nate, um, did all the scores come in today? Eventually. I think so. I um, I'll, I'll let people know if I if I I think I think they did. Okay. So, yeah. So thanks everyone. I know that's a lot of work for the committee to read and you know, to make recommendations or rankings. All right, so we'll just hang out and wait till we hear back from you. Yep. Yeah, okay. I think, you know, Ben, I think, Ben, I don't know if you, you can see who's in the audience, but I'm assuming there are people there who can hear this and then we can just email out to all the applicants uh, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, good to Thank see everybody. You, everyone. you too. Take Say care. Hi. Sure, yeah, blame, blame me. You can all blame me. <laughs> need to blame. We don't need to blame. Look, a Zoom free yep. evening. My gosh, I'll take that anytime. <laughs> totally I blaming. thank you. I didn't even know there was something right. to blame for, and I was blaming. <laughs> <laughs> take care, folks.
Yeah, Bye. thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.